How you doing? Say, we can have just one night, or we can have one whole life. Okay, good morning. So basically, I had a very interesting start to my morning because this morning, my daughter decided to have a little bit of a tantrum. Um, good morning. How you doing, Afrolicious Mama? Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Gabrielle as well. How you doing? Let me know where you are tuned in from, if you're on the UK side of the border or across the water. So um, just start off by sharing with you a bit of my behind the scenes. I've got two children under eight and I've also got two very big children as well that are 18 and also 24. And the two little ones, they keep me on my toes. And this morning, my daughter decided that the book that we'd read last night, because I have to obviously spend lots of time with my, with my babies as well. She said, oh, mum, I need it in my book bag. She couldn't find it. Now she gets told to bring home three books a, a, a week, right? Three books a week. And she had two of the three books in her book bag. So because of time, I said, look, doesn't matter. Your book day to return books is Friday. So don't worry. Miss is not going to tell you off. You can bring in your two books, explain to her if we've been reading, and then you bring in the third book tomorrow. Would she listen? No. So we had a whole tantrum. So I was slightly later than I normally would be on the routine for school run. She's on time, but it's a little bit frustrating. I'm sure those of you that are mummies or carers, or if you've got little ones or even cousins and siblings, you know how it goes. There's always an adventure in my house anyway. So this morning I'm gonna be um, opening up the hot seat for some of you to come in, but I really just wanted to share with you some tips. And I, and I started off with this track, right? Because yesterday I actually shared a tip about the importance of slowing down right slowing down so that you can actually get clarity on what you're doing because the thing is a lot of us are doing many different things right now and i keep saying this and i'm going to keep reminding you right a lot of us are doing the most and actually we need to be reducing what we're doing and focusing right we need to reduce what we're doing and focus so let me know in the comments are any of you selling anything let me know in the comments if any of you are actually selling anything are you selling anything at the moment what promotions have you got on? Do let me know via the comments. And what I would love to do this morning is, is bring some of you in the hot seat if you want to join me to talk about what you're doing, but also to really educate you a little bit about some of the ways it's not necessarily working for you, right? So who's selling stuff? Let me know. Good morning. Let me know if you're selling stuff. Um, let me share a tip with you. And that tip is that if you focus and slow down on just one thing, or even two things between now and the end of the year when it comes to what you're selling, things will be so much easier for you. I have actually had quite a few different balls juggling the last maybe quarter. And now I'm actually getting ready to completely sort of slow down from the middle of December because as I'm sure you're aware, there has to be a balance. And being a mummy of four and also having family that I love dearly and also running my business and serving clients is a lot. So I've, I've actually factored in time within my diary to make sure that I can not only slow down for myself, but also make time for my loved ones as well. And I hope that all of you will be doing that as well. So the way in which we work as business owners is key because if you haven't actually thought about booking time into your diary and making time to actually free up time so that you can do the things you love or be with the people that you love, that's the first thing I'm going to say to you. So slow down by actually freeing up more space in your diary. Does that make sense? Slow down by actually freeing up more time in your diary. Now, how many of you actually have a diary or a planner or an app that you use for time management? Let me know in the comments. Diary, planner, app, let me know in the comments, right? Because if you haven't used your planner or diary or app in a way that tells you when to take a break, I would strongly recommend that. And as crazy as it sounds, if you tell yourself when to take breaks, right? It will actually help you massively. So if, for example, you don't like working Mondays, have a break on Mondays. Don't work on Mondays, right? Take a whole day off every Monday and focus on you or on things you might be doing the rest of the week. Just make a little note. If you know that you don't like working on Wednesday afternoons or you're committed to, let's say, doing activities with your family or even activities for yourself, maybe you do an art class or you go jogging and stuff like that, put it down in your planner. I've actually got entire sections in my planner, personally, the one I've I've created where you actually have to look at how you're going to use your time and make sure you tick off the things that you want to do in your personal stroke business life because for me it's really important to remind people that you know if you haven't got time you have to make time and I've got this saying make time to make time right make time to make time 
Someone says, V's on point. I'm a well-being business owner and self-care equals improvement. Absolutely. So as business owners, we have to make time in our diaries to make time. That's the first point. We're talking about slowing down and I'm going to bring some of you in the hot seat. The second thing is, right, when you've actually slowed down, I want you to reflect. So actually making time to reflect is key. Not just reflecting on your business, but actually reflecting on yourself as well. Because as humans, we make a lot of errors, don't we? We have a lot of boo-boos, don't we, as humans? And so when you've slowed down, make sure you make time to reflect on what you're doing, right? So the first point, for those of you that are note-taking for me, the first point was slow down right so that you can look at making time for yourself the second point was slow down so that you can reflect okay because when you reflect on your life your work life balance and so on it makes a huge difference especially if you can be honest with yourself because when i'm honest with myself that is actually like a reminder to me that i do need to slow down right okay the third point i'm going to raise with regards to slowing things down and being clear on what you're doing in your business is slow down and celebrate your own success because you don't have to go at a thousand miles an hour to see results. Good morning. You don't have to go at a thousand miles an hour to see results, right? Let me just clean my hands because they're a little bit dry, right? Slow down and celebrate your success. Take time to celebrate your success because at the end of the day, a lot of us are doing amazing things and we're not celebrating ourselves. You know what? For some of us, getting out of bed this morning could have been a big success for you it could be a big win especially if you don't normally like to wake up early in the morning for some of you making that contact with the customer that owes you money could be a small win for you because maybe it's something you've been running away from right for some of you actually going live as a lot of my clients have thank you for the note taking that's a huge success right so we've got to get into the habit of slowing down to do these three things celebrate your success reflect on what you're doing right and also make sure that you slow down to make time for yourself. How do you like those tips this morning? So for me, I, I really just want to remind you of this is so important because I think a lot of us are out here listening to gurus and experts telling us to do a million and one things. You've got to do this. You've got to go live. And you know what? I don't teach like that. I don't teach like that. I'm about doing what you can manage. I'm about you doing what you are able to do based on your capacity, based on your resources. And that's one of the things that I always encourage my clients to look at. What can you actually do that's not going to involve burnout? If you feel like you're overwhelmed, let me just tell you something. The reason that you might feel overwhelmed is you haven't slowed down to do the three things I mentioned this morning. You haven't slowed down to make time for yourself. You haven't slowed down to actually look and reflect on what you're doing, personal and business. And you haven't slowed down to actually look at your wins, however tiny they might be, right? So let's be real here. A lot of us are listening to people telling us to do a million and one thing, start a course, do a live, this, that, that, that. If you cannot emotionally manage that, why would you start trying to do it? Why would you start trying to learn new things if you haven't yet even mastered what you were previously trying to learn the previous month? It makes no sense to me. So those are my tips for you this morning, all right? Slow down so you can make better progress. Slow down so that you can actually focus on what's important. Slow down so that you can actually celebrate. Take the time to be in the moment, in the present moment, and say, wow, I actually did something big. I actually achieved this on my own or with my team. Yeah, because those are the things that actually are really good for your mindset. Everything I've read, mentioned tonight, and by the way, I'm just freestyling here, but everything I've mentioned to you this morning are tips that I know will help you with your mindset. If you're celebrating your wins, it's a big boost for your uh, confidence. It's a big boost for you as well in terms of you moving forward and making progress, right? So celebrating your wins is key. If you're celebrating as well or reflecting on what you're doing, again, that, that's key. Because if you're able to actually say, okay, I didn't do so well last month. I never made the sales I wanted to make last month. Good morning. I didn't actually speak to that customer that I wanted to connect with. I didn't actually reply to all the comments in my feedback, right? These are all the things that you need to be reflecting on so that you can do better, okay? And how many of you have actually got customers that you've had buy from you throughout the whole of this year and they haven't put a Google review on for you, they haven't left you a Facebook review, they haven't given you a LinkedIn review? How many of you have got clients that have actually bought something from you? Let me know. How many of you have actually made money, even if it's a fiver?